Hey guys, Luke here. I'm here to do a video just going over my thoughts on uh, the New South Wales Blue side, and this is going to be with the help of Rugby League Live 3 Fan Hub. Uh, there's going to be a few videos coming out next few days with the Fan Hub. Now, uh, I've gone through and I've found all the players. There's just a few people need updating because they had the same uh, rosters as last year. Um, so, basically, what we've done, gone through uh, into the, the add players, move players sort of thing, and. Um, gone ahead and we've sort of we've recreated the side that's happening in real life basically i'm just going to go over my thoughts on the news on the new file side and i will say uh it might go through individually and uh or, yeah we'll go through individually um so there were a few players that were already in the um squad that I've just taken out or whatever so josh dugan i thought he had a really good game the first game and i'm pretty happy with him in this in the squad at fullback then the other competition really is uh brett stewart who could probably do a good job as well but uh, you know, Josh Dugan, definitely happy with him there. Uh, no reason to drop him. Uh, Brett Morris coming back into the squad. I think a good move, dropping Tupo. Tupo just looked a bit out of depth. Um, yeah, I think Brett Morris, best winger in the world when he plays in the wing. And definitely right up there as being one of the best fullbacks in the league as well. Um, very, very talented. And uh, definitely a big in uh, for the side. Josh Morris destroyed Inglis the whole game. Um... Didn't get too many opportunities in attack, but that's just what's going to happen when you got Hogkins on that side. Um, but yeah, Josh Morris shut down English all game, and uh, very happy with that. Michael Jennings, uh, fairly quiet, but I suppose, I don't know, he was, did okay. Um, Hopawadi, um, Hopawadi, I, I still, I mean, he, he was okay, he did his job, I suppose, but at the same time, I still don't see the reason for picking him, to be honest, like, he's not... I've had a conversation with a few people in this, and he's, you know, he hasn't got exceptional speed or any strength, and he's just not really, you're not great, with, that great with a high ball. Like, I suppose they just keep picking him because he's got experience, but, but I don't know how a player's going to get experience if you don't pick him. Um, and it's like Johnston probably went a perfect uh, time to put him in the first for like game one, but they didn't do that. Anyways, moving on to the halves, the lackluster halves of uh, Hawkinson and Pierce. I can't say I'm like that thrilled with them. Um, I mean, they didn't play totally shit, and also we're throwing we're throwing Farah in this category as well. Like they didn't play shit. Like, obviously, Farah tackled tackled a lot, uh, Hawkinson and Pierce and that. But like when it really comes down to it, I mean Farah, Pierce, and uh, like a recent Hawkinson just they just shown time and time again that they like they just don't have it when the game's on the line. To like, I don't know, they just don't have that like killer edge or something about them like they had plenty of times to take a shot a field goal and a few times like Pierce took them out wide and then Farrow didn't make the pass and like Hawkinson was in position so I can't really put down the field goal thing to Hawkinson that at the time I was but um yeah in terms of everything else for Hawkinson not that great um I suppose they're just there to sort of just make sure all the gun players uh, like the Morrison Jennings and stuff so they can just do the job and they have someone who can just get them the ball which I'm not even sure Hawkinson can do that. I mean, he got dropped from uh, my side. I go for the Bulldogs, and he got dropped from them. And I prefer to have Mumbai and Reynolds in the half. So, so as it tells you everything. Tamo and Woods had pretty good go forward. Tamu was uh, very good. Scott and Hoffman, I suppose they're there to just sort of, well, you know, bash people. I suppose Hoffman's there to do a fair bit of work. Gallon comes back to the squad. Oh, sorry, into the starting lineup even. Um, I can't say I'm like heaps through with that. I mean, I was until I saw him play the other week, and I know a lot of people like to be like, oh, well, he ran for 200 metres or whatever, and he made certain so tackles, but it's like, yeah, but what about the ones where Kane Evans just, like, runs straight around him, and he, like, looks like he can't even chase, or after, like, 25 minutes, he's blowing so hard, and, like, has to come off, and he came off for a few minutes, went back on, and Orbison should have scored a try, because, um, Gallon wasn't following up, but he just dropped the ball with, like, an open line. But th th there was plenty of things that signaled to me that Gallant isn't ready for Origin, although they're always just going to throw him back in. Interesting to see if he'll just be able to just keep pushing through because Origin, like he always seems to do, just go that extra mile. Um, or if he really, like, is that far behind his fitness. Yeah, interesting to see. The bench, uh, I think it's okay. I probably would have preferred last game's bench, to be honest. But, I mean, the last game's bench didn't perform that well, I suppose. Uh, Marin, up the... First off, they need to get their rotations a lot better. Marin playing, like, 20 minutes, if that. Like, coming on in the 60-minute mark. I, I don't understand that. He's not that sort of player. Um, Clemmer, I thought Clemmer had a really good game. I th think he's going to be, you know, he's going to be in the squad all the time. 
uh, from here on in. Josh Jackson, um, I'm not really sure. Like, I like Josh Jackson. I think he, he's a great player. I'm not really sure if he's someone you would take on a bench. I think he has to be a starter, probably, or nothing. But, I mean, I'm happy for Josh Jackson to be there. Boyd Corner, um, I don't think he offers that much. I'm sure, I, you know, Luke Lewis probably would offer more. I, I just, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Corner, put it that way. Uh, is you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Um... The yeah, overall, the side, it doesn't impress me a hell of a lot. Um, although, I think Brett Morris is a big in on the wing. Um, I mean, it sounds dumb to say on the wing, but, you know, obviously has a great combination with Josh, you know, the brothers and that. And uh, he's played pretty well this year when he has played. Um, yeah, I can just see, just got a winning mentality, which, which is pretty good. As You know, as well as Gallon, should lift the rest of the guys, even if he might not be up to scratch. Maybe just him being there will lift some of the other players as well. So I suppose that could be a positive. But yeah, I'm just not sold on the halves. Um, I'm really not sold on the halves, even from my club level. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I think going to have to do. they're going to have to play pretty well to beat Queensland. Uh, and I'll leave it at that, really. But if you have enjoyed the video, uh, make sure you leave a like. Leave in the comment section who would have been in your Game 2 lineup. And you got to remember some players that like obviously injured and that sort of stuff. So don't go putting in players who are obviously not going to be able to play like Adam Reynolds. They'd be like, oh, Adam Reynolds should have got picked. Well, obviously, he's injured. He can't. Um, yeah. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at MrLukeNYT. If my Twitter handle, I'll probably be tweeting a little bit. And uh, hopefully, New South Wales win and go New South Wales. Bye, guys.